Welcome to Into the Light Podcast. This is where we will be discussing and exploring all things Ascension. Ascension journey, Ascension journey mapping, and understanding how we can deepen and increase our spiritual and healing journey, along with understanding concepts around the global consciousness awakening that's happening, quantum energy healing, personal growth and enlightenment, trauma healing, and so much more as we learn together from experts in the field. I'm your host, Adina Movana, and I appreciate you taking the time to join me today. Let's dive in. And you're not familiar with Magdalena Grace. She's an accomplished coach with helping over 10,000 clients since 2000. Magdalena specializes in holistic healing, navigating navigating mental, spiritual, and emotional realms. Uh, With over 50 sacred plant medicine ceremonies, she guides transformative inward journeys, helping many people unravel the root causes of their triggers and wounds. And her healing expertise includes addressing the mother-father wound, ancestral trauma, emotional eating, addictive behaviors, fear, guilt, and shame issues, abandonment issues, unworthiness issues, weight loss challenges, all of these different things with autoimmune issues. And I think you have something here called quieting the ego monkey mind and all of that (laughs) unconscious shadow work. So, so much stuff that you do, Magdalene. I'm so glad to have you today. Thank you so much. Thank you. You did a great job in summarizing my bio. I know it was kind of long. (laughs) And there's even more because I know you've been kind of rebranding and doing a lot more of this ceremonial and spiritual work these days and really taking on this shamanic healer or healer's journey. And uh, yeah, so I'm just so excited to hear some of the latest with you because I know we were talking a few months back and now I'm getting lots of your emails about new, new medicines you're using. And I want to talk about some of that today. So I'm just excited to to dig right in. <laughs> Yay. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So yeah, tell me a little bit about what, what brought you on this journey of healing. I know this might be like a recap, but because you did go through some major transformations yourself. And I know even in your own relationships and your marriage. So basically what brought you to this journey of really focusing on the trauma work and being very central with the integration of plant medicine and other different sacred medicine techniques. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. And I'll do my best to do the cliff notes version. I think the best, the best place to start actually is in 2007 with, I, and I think you, you work with a lot of Ascension people in your audience, right? You guys talk about all of this stuff. So I think a lot of people resonate with the language, but 2007, I had my first spiritual awakening. I had been raised 30 years, was a diehard Christian thought if I didn't believe Jesus was my savior, I'm going to hell and all of that kind of stuff. Right. And I, I had my first awakening and that's when I questioned everything for the first time in my life. And I had lost three businesses and real estate crash of 2007 and became homeless as a result, car repossessed just the day before my 30th birthday. And my goal, my, my masculine wound goal was to be a millionaire by the time I was 30. So that was very humbling. And what I didn't know is it opened up my mother, father wound, my religion wound. And I'll explain what that means in a little bit. And I I was really feeling not enough. I was actually feeling never enough worthless. And it, it forced me into feeling like I had to be a human doing and have to prove myself and all of these kind of things. And I, I also like a couple of years later, I became a mom and a wife, which really opened up the mother father wound. Cause I never had a mom. She had been a uh, schizophrenic diagnosed after her first pregnancy. I think again, most of it was swept under the carpet. So no one ever really told me the, the whole story, which is is all. I've done a lot of healing with my family of origin, but at that time, I just felt very outcasted, very black sheep, very alone, and married an African, which was very different because I'm I'm from a very white um, family in Iowa, <laughs> and so I became even more outcasted and different and weird, and just shouldered a lot of pain. And I didn't know it was unprocessed trauma. And then during that journey, also in 2006, the first of now 12 friends committed suicide. I lost my brother in 2020 to alcoholism, a mentor, clients, friends to alcoholism. And here I found myself in 2020 at the humble beginnings of my second spiritual awakening. So I spent about 14 years lost, dazed, unconscious, 
basically. And in the unconscious mind, 90% of our external results is driven by that. What now I talk about, I call it shadow work. Carl Jung is my favorite with the, the psychology background and what he talks about the unconscious mind and shadow work. And so I didn't know what I didn't know. And I just knew at that time I'd become a binge drinking workaholic. So in 2020, when my brother died of alcoholism, I saw like, oh my God, I'm going to end up like my brother or one of my friends that committed suicide. Like I totally got it. And I just was a shell of a person by that point. And it didn't feel like a good mom, didn't feel like a good wife. And I actually read a book called The Surrender Experiment by Michael Singer. And it really kind of pissed me off when I read it. And I, I, the word surrender just angered me because I had become such a human doing, like I had to make six figures. I had to prove myself a woman in a man's world. And all of this stuff that I didn't understand at the time was very patriarchal, right? The systems that we're breaking away from. And so after I read that book and realizing I, I had to wave the white flag, I've been white knuckling it through life with so much grief unprocessed and then figuring out so much trauma unprocessed, doing psychotherapy, grief counseling, it all just sort of made it worse. And so a friend at the end of 2020 said, and he was channeling the divine. He's, he's a very gifted channel. And he said, you're not supposed to be a sales coach anymore. You're supposed to be a spiritual teacher and a healer. But, and I'm like, no shit, Sherlock, but I've been doing all the things. And he said, no, 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 go play with psilocybin and ayahuasca. So that was the door that opened for me at the end of 2020. So beginning of 2021, is when I started to dive into the plant medicine world. And so mm -hmm. to, to keep it simple, from the beginning of 2021 till last year, I have sat over now almost 60 times with, yeah. with deep sacred plant medicine. It's not about, I don't even call it psychedelics because people think of the 60s and getting high and free love and all that kind of stuff. And it's, it's not that at all. I'm not about getting high because I was so broken and so devastated. And through all of these journeys, the first 20 or so was about healing myself, going within and connecting with my brother who died, my mother who died, my father who died, all of my friends who committed suicide. And even people like Prince and Robin Williams would show up. Patrick Swayze showed up in one of my journeys and they, were, they all died from addiction and or suicide combined with addiction. And so it was like, holy shit, why are these people all here? And, and they were like telling me, way to go. You're healing the mother wound, the father wound, the religion wound, the, the separation. My religion is better than yours. All this patriarchy control and power and greed and icky stuff that we're cleansing as a planet right now and ascending hopefully above it, right? Walking through that shadow, but then embracing it, loving all parts of it. So I had to accept a lot of my own shame, a lot of my own guilt, I had to love myself through all of my own addiction, my own fears, my own mistakes. Again, everything happens for us. So I was able to have a lot of forgiveness, a lot of crying, like oceans of tears. I shed almost 40 pounds and, and all of these medicines helped me get into the other dimensions in ways that I personally, I don't think I could have done it any other way. That was my path. There are many paths to ascension. But then on the flip side of that, a year ago, my husband and I started serving medicine because we also saw in the industry, there's a lot of plant medicine out there, even though it's technically underground, but there's not a lot of nutrition support and central nervous system support and integration and somatic therapy. And how do you bring all of those messages and embody them in this lifetime? Because I also saw people doing plant medicine going bipolar my husband almost died twice. That's a whole nother story for maybe another day. So plant medicine is very sacred, but it's also very dangerous. And so once we started serving together side by side, it just was like I was coming back to my true self, being able to be of service, to be a medicine woman, to also heal the witch wound. Because I found from the medicine, I had been burned at the stake many lifetimes and killed for being a woman and a healer many times. And so to make amends with all of that, it took a lot, a lot of deep work. And so that led me to where we are today and having a sanctuary and healing ceremonial space in North County, San Diego. And, and I love to work with mompreneurs. We love to work with couples and we love to work with light workers and healers on the Ascension path. Cause it's, it's, it's a gnarly path and you can't do it alone. You, you gotta have support. Right. Yeah. Tell, that's what I was curious about because it sounds like you've had some 
horror stories or people who have negative experiences and or or who haven't yet delved into this the realms of psychedelics or plant medicine or psilocybin, anything like that. And so tell me a little bit about the importance of working with a coach or having that support, because I, I I know from just experiences that people don't always have the best results if they're just off experimenting on their own. So yeah, tell, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, it's really scary. And I know I've been in that space where I've had a quote unquote bad trip and, and there's, there's, there's so much I could go off into. I think what I didn't know was, and I was ignorant too. This was me. I I was a naive farm girl from Iowa, right? So this was just another one of my awakening components of taking radical responsibility. When I was going into the plant medicine space, I was so broken, so vulnerable, and so naive that I just would go to ceremonies. There would be almost no preparation and almost no integration. So after several ceremonies, I started having what I call a trauma loop experience where I go into kind of like the, the shadow and accepting the messages that I came, that came to me, but then I would get stuck there. Some of it calls it a trauma loop. I didn't process it. And so that was my learning curve for like, oh my gosh, I'm starting to have some really scary thoughts. I'm starting to not, can I swear on here? Well, yeah, I think we've been, I was really like, I'm not, I don't give a fuck uh, about anything, you know? And so I was not even focusing on my business in that first year. And then I recognized like, oh my gosh, I don't think this is supposed to be the way it's supposed to be. And so I started piecemealing integration, somatic therapy, Kundalini yoga, getting back into understanding my gut brain because the gut brain is is a big part of the medicine. A lot of people focus on this, but if your gut brain is not healthy, it may not absorb the medicine as well. There's all different rabbit holes I can take us down that I've learned now. But the, the most important thing is to do it with intention to have up to even 30 days preparation, not, not just nutritionally, but with what is it? What is the shadow? What is the, what is the trauma? What is it that you really want the medicine to show you? And then of course, set and setting is huge. So huge. Cause there was times where I could feel like I was getting some of the energies from other people that were kind of like transferring onto me. We had one time where (laughs) we had a ceremony. Oh my gosh. We like for the next three days, my husband and I were fighting and arguing, just going at it. And then we, we called one of our, we called her our ghostbuster friend. And we said, I think something might've leaked in during the ceremony because the veil is thin, right? When you're on plant medicine, you're, you're connected to all different realms and dimensions, the good and the bad and the ugly, right? Yeah. So if you don't do it in a ceremonial way, if you don't sage, but also for us, we only serve medicine with sacred ceremonial prayers and calling in the four directions and really asking for divine guidance and support and protection, anything can happen. So I knew that that was a big learning curve for us. It was, it was, it was supposed to happen. I'm grateful for it now, but at the time it was terrifying. Because I thought I was losing my mind. I, I wasn't really conscious of, of what was happening. And you can have dark energies attached to you, this, that, and the other. So we learned from that. And now now we, we, we tell people preparation is at least, some people would say 80% of the success, but then also the ceremony, the set and setting, and then the post work, the integration, making whole and complete of your experience. And how are you going to change your life? What are you, how are you going to be, what are you going to do so you can have different results in your life? Yeah, absolutely. And I have, we have a couple of comments on the Facebook live with Laura saying she can relate and um, she loves plant medicine so much. And Michelle saying she uh, believes in it and and makes it a daily, it makes it a habit to do these things. So yeah, I think people are getting more and more awareness around the importance of that, of this work. And I think I, I, I said in the beginning, some of your specialties around like healing the masculine and the feminine wound or doing this like lower ego work. We hear, we're hearing a lot about that stuff. So tell me how that connects in with doing the, doing things with not only plant medicine, but also your other forms of, of sacred medicine treatments and things like that. Yeah. So there was a, one of the first documentaries that I was re- recommended that I'm sure most, if you're familiar with plant medicine, you've all heard of Gabor Mate and his documentary, the wisdom of trauma. And so that was the first time, believe it or not, 
none of my plant medicine teachers or anybody was really getting into the depths of that. So that's mm -hmm. when I watched that documentary and saw all the people that were addicted, struggling or homeless coming from scarcity or lack. It was all related to childhood trauma. And so then when I started doing the plant medicine and connecting with forgiving my, my brother, I was raised part by an alcoholic brother. And, and thankfully I was never like physically abused, but there's a lot of verbal abuse and a lot of fear. And so I went into good girl mode for much of my, my young life. So that caused different codependency behaviors. I call it the sacred or sorry, the wounded feminine. I couldn't do anything wrong. I had to be perfect. The perfectionist syndrome. Right. And there was so many other layers to that. And then of course, with my parents, never being really married and, and coming from a divorced home. I didn't also have a mom to model for me. So when I became a mom, oh my God, it was traumatic. But mm. I also found out from the plants that I chose my parents. I came in, they were like the biggest karmic besties I could have ever asked for. This happened for me with, with my mom being a schizophrenic, my dad being a shutdown, an emotionally available father, my brother being an alcoholic. We, we all agreed to that. Like we talked about that in the medicine space. It's one thing to hear it and to understand it if you follow Dolores Can and, and some of these other people, but to embody it and feel it, which the plant medicine is really good at shutting this down and going into your body. So I, I had like a brick wall around my heart and it broke open so I could cry because I was so numb to all of the pain from both childhood trauma, but then the choices I made as an adult as a result of the things that were modeled for me, because from zero to seven is when we're developed as emotional beings. So we cry for a bottle, we cry for getting our diaper changed. And guess what? Our parents, they all did the best they could, but our little, our little brains, our little hearts, we don't understand that. So you can start to feel rejected. You could, in my case, my mom had me when she was in the psych ward, right? So I felt abandoned from day one because I was taken from her arms to never really have a mom. And, and so for those first seven years is the emotional, then it's the mental when you go to school. So my good girl syndrome was like, got to get straight A's, got to be perfect. I don't want anybody else to abandon me. All of these little stories that our mind adopts and develops. And then of course you start to develop physically puberty and all of these things. And I had a lot of traumatic things going into puberty too, without a mom and figuring out your period and, oh my God, what's a tampon? And you're, you, you don't have support, then it can become a very lonely road. And that's the road that I chose. And so I like to joke the song by White Snake. Here I go again on my own, going down the only road I ever know. And do you know that song? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know the lyrics, but yeah, it sounds a little. <laughs> but I joke that that was my anthem, but that was a very lonely place to be. And so I'm sharing all this to say that the medicine more than any psychotherapist, more than grief counseling, all of them have their place. Okay. I support it hundred percent. It's just for me, I had to break through the default mode network, which you might hear a lot in plant medicine. I had to break through the unconscious and be able to feel it in my body and to then be able to release it and understand it. And so through all that, I discovered Carl Jung and his conversation around the unconscious mind. I know everyone loves Joe Dispenza. I think he's fine, but I got to be honest with you, Carl Jung, because uh, I did subconscious mind work. I even had a coach, by the way, for a year before I started plant medicine to help me. I'm like, I know I'm not operating from my conscious and I really don't like being a borderline alcoholic. And I really don't, I'm not sure about my marriage. Are we going to stay together? So I thought that all of that work was going to do it. It didn't, it did nothing but scratch the surface. So mm -hmm. Carl Jung and the shadow work is talking about going into the roots of hell into like your family tree ancestral is what I mean by the, the roots of your family tree and really getting to those, those pain points that didn't start with you. I'm here to tell you, they started with your parents and many, 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 many generations back. And the plants showed me that too, because I wanted to get to the root cause of why does autoimmune disease run in my family? Well, that's in your throat, right? Throat chakra. And mm -hmm. so I've done lots of chakra work and different kind of healing work and all of that. I was able to understand, well, I've been, I've been strangled in past lives. I've, I've been shut down as a woman, burned at the stake. All of this stuff was, was through the plant medicine. 
And so for me, it was like understanding, wow, a lot of my unconscious stuff is so unconscious from past lives. I've inherited it in my DNA from the cells, my blood that is in my veins. And again, the plants for me, because there's so many different beautiful modalities that can help you, you know, do this without plant medicine. It's just the path that I got to cho choose and then to now serve people with. And my husband, through his, he's a shaman now and, and he rediscovered his gifts and um, he's from Africa. And so we do a lot with ancestral clearing and a lot with ancestral healing because we're about getting to the roots of the matter and the ancestral roots is where for us, what in our experience and what we've seen is like 75% of what we're just repeating history. These wars that are happening in the Middle East, we've been there before, right? With all of the conflict and, and the, the economy issues, we've been here before when, when the Christians came and forced my ancestors to convert to something that wasn't their thing. And you shut down paganism and you shut down women and you burn them at the stake and you make men... The leaders, that's what we're undoing right now. So it yeah. started way back and we get to be here in this exciting time. And that's the last thing I'll say to send it back to you is like, I didn't understand that. I had a bit of a chip on my shoulder, both as a woman who became very emasculated, had to grow a penis or two to be compete in a man's business world, right? I didn't have to. That was just the path that I, <laughs> that was my karma. But I think a lot of women can identify with that. I didn't have a lot of love and compassion. There was a lot of anger and a lot of frustration with that. And so now the plants have shown me this was your karma. So it becomes your dharma. So then you can help other light workers and healers and other people on the ascension path heal that. Because whether you believe it or not, I this is just my personal belief. If you don't heal that fear and that karma, you may not be ascending to the new earth in the way that you deserve to. And and who knows, depending on what you believe, you you may not be going there. And I think that's a, that's a conversation that we all got to figure out for ourselves. Wow. Yeah, that's amazing. And how you connected to that importance of the ancestral trauma work, going back these generations that we're carrying with us on a, I mean, on a DNA, a cellular level and dismantling these, the patriarchal problems that have created our, our imbalances or led you into that distorted kind of masculine energy state and how uh, it sounds like it really helps helps heal through that. And I also wanted to ask about the, you mentioned earlier, like the importance of gut health and Michelle actually commented on Facebook that you have a, if you have a protocol using specific herbs and supplements, or you helping people like also detox and detox their body from specific or with specific foods and herbs, is that also something of your, with your protocol or when you're, when you're leading people up to their plant medicine experience? Yeah, absolutely. Because I was just to let you guys know, in my background, part of the 10,000, what she was talking about 17 years in the health and fitness industry. And because I had a schizophrenic mother, I was always terrified to be going crazy, depressed, whatever. And sure enough, after I had my firstborn child, I had postpartum depression. And through that process, I also got hypothyroidism, which then led to my thyroid Hashimoto's disease in my throat. And it was all linked back to gut health in utero with my mom is when it started and probably past lives. Uh, so absolutely. I come at it from the chakra perspective because your solar plexus and your, your sacral chakra, that's, those are the two chakras that are most supporting your gut health and your sacral or sorry. Yeah. Your sacral. I'm, I'm, if you're watching this on camera, I'm, <laughs> I just, I just pointed to my solar plexus sacral, but anyway, your solar plexus is, is your power center. Right. And I gave my power away. I was very codependent, all of that kind of stuff and trying to be the good girl. Right. And then my sacral shutting down my sexuality, having a lot of shame from the church around my sexuality and intimacy and all of that, the desires shut down my creativity. And, and so through all that, as I healed those chakras and those lower vibrational energies, and then, so it's, it's two part, I had to go at it from the spiritual level for the sacral and the solar plexus. Of course, the root chakra and fear is a huge part of that childhood trauma. A lot of it starts in those lower three chakras because those are the first ones that are developed as we develop as humans so then you have the gut health so absolutely i work with some nutritional things i love the ayurvedic medicine path so i have people usually take their constitution tests whether they're a pitta kapha or vata or usually we're a combination and then i love ayurvedic herbs you can even go just google banyan botanicals 
They have a free dosha test and that can mm-hmm. help you. But again, I will say that we got to work with those, those fear, guilt, and shame at the spiritual level, the emotional level, because, you know, the physical stuff, it, it manifests last. It manifests yeah. last. We're developed emotionally, then mentally, then physically. And all a part of that is your spiritual karma, right? What are mm-hmm. you here to learn? And so my almost 40 year gut health journey was here to teach me about truly guilt, shame, and fear, and being able to digest it, to be able to love myself and accept it. And then the the nutraceuticals or the the Ayurvedic herbs and stuff help. And then of course, I'm going to put a plug for combo frog medicine because I am a combo practitioner. (laughs) Um, So as much as plant medicine helped me, combo was like, 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 Part of that J curve, when you see a J curve, like plant medicine was like right here, combo was there, like right mm-hmm. at that J curve. When you see a company skyrocketing or succeeding, that's when I really was able to cleanse and clear the detoxing, the cleansing, whatever you want to call it, because it, it's a medicine, it's legal. You got to have a practitioner. <laughs> Again, mm-hmm. disclaimer, everything I'm talking about, talk to your doctor, check on a <laughs> mental health situation, of course, but then don't ever do this stuff alone. Don't do this at home or whatever that phrase used to be. Don't try this at home. But combo forces you to throw up, poop, cry. There's a lot of somatic release. It it, it helps the vagus nerve. And if you Google the importance of vagus nerve, it helps with parasympathetic system. It helps uh, with a lot of science and peptides. It helps with the gut health, the gut microbiome, if it's out of whack, to me, this is my experience. It doesn't matter how much meditation you're doing. <laughs> if your gut microbiome is out of whack, good luck with that. It's going to take more than meditation to help. And I feel like combo, it's literally getting the bile, the stuff out of your lymphatic system and help re-co-regulate. And it does a lot for the brain, but the gut brain is the number one brain in your body. If you, if you I know you're into superfoods and stuff like yeah. that as well. So yeah, the nutrition is very important when you're doing plant medicine and combo can help you have deeper journeys with medicine, plant medicine as well. Yeah. So I was going to ask about your combo because I've been getting your emails about it and to get to learn more because, and you didn't, we didn't go into what it is exactly. And I also how I, you have the little t- dots, but it's, a, it's like from the, the rain for, from the frog, right. From the rainforest. So how is it, how do you get it and how is it administered? And I know you said it's like legal and safe, but you have to have sort of a an authorized practitioner is what you said, right? Yeah. In some ways it's kind of like acupuncture. It's best to have a practitioner who can put the consult you, do the medical intake, the mental health intake, the organ intake, the gut health intake, all of that I do because of my background and 17 years in health and fitness and gut health and mental health were my priorities because of my own journey and my mom and all of that. But then from there, it's a, it's a secretion from a frog in the Amazon. I joke, it's really an alien that came down to save the planet. That's what I think. But anyway, the 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 tribes in the jungles, they use it up to 20 times a month. They call it nature's vaccine. They don't have vaccines down there. This is what they use to detox, to cleanse, to purify, because a lot of them drink from the river. Not necessarily the safest and best, purest water, right? So they sit with combo up to 20 times a month. It was it came about because a tribe was dying. I can't remember now if it was the 1700s or when it was, but a tribe was dying and the tribe leader was desperate. He drank ayahuasca and said, hey, I need help. We're, we're dying here. And so the ayahuasca, the grandmother vine, led him to the frog, which it's a, it is a poisonous frog. If an animal were to eat it in the jungle, it's dead. So you don't administer it orally, obviously. We put it on your skin. We we use incense sticks to burn like a little hole. And then it, it goes in transdermally. Usually three is, is we start with three points, we call them, the medicine of the secretion. And then it goes in and within a minute, you could be puking. So it's a 20 minute experience. It doesn't blow you out like plant medicine. So I actually recommend if someone's really serious about true transformational lasting results, they consider starting with combo first because it's, it's very grounding medicine and depending on the practitioner, because that's a whole nother conversation, same thing with plant medicine. They're, they're not all as focused on gut health and stuff like I am, but Mm -hmm. find one that resonates with you 
definitely go sit with someone and it can help you with trauma. It can help you with gut health, physical health issues. It's helped clear one of my colleagues, her MS is clear. It's helped me reduce my autoimmune disease, thyroid, Hashimoto's numbers. I get my blood work done this month. And my goal is to go in remission and combo is really the only tool that I'm using. I'm not taking 5,000 supplements like I used to meditation and other things. Of course, lifestyle is important. There's no quick fix or magical cure, but combo gets to the, gets to the body, what needs to be released and cleansed and, and chakras as well. That's amazing. I didn't realize, and it, it sounds like such a good, like intermediary, like between doing something more intensive, like I've heard ayahuasca or these and in only 20 minutes. And yeah, do you do it more than once when you're working with clients or how, what's the frequency and how long does it take to really see substantial results when you're, when you're working together with the combo? Yeah, that's a great question. And it's always case by case basis. Cause it's a unique thing. Uh, people got to be really committed. It's not mm-hmm. like, and I, I don't mean to take away from acupuncturists or Reiki chiropractic. I do it all. Although I almost don't do it even half as much as I used to, because I feel like combo has done so much for me. I do it as a maintenance once every other month to keep Mm. helping me as, as the ascension happens, more of our shadow work comes up, we get triggered. We have more fear. We have more ancestral stuff and baggage. And I just sat with combo yesterday and was like, I got to get some stuff out. (laughs) And so today I feel so much more love and light and feel better. So it's, it can be a maintenance plan, but I usually recommend if, if, if someone is able to, right. If depending on their goal, if they can do six times in three months, so twice a month for three months with integration and coaching and nutritional guidance and support, they could be set. Like Mm -hmm. you could have so much change. There's also the three and 30 days. Most of my clients do that to get Mm -hmm. like a radical transformation and boost. So that's how I started also was the three and and 30 days. And so it, it just depends on the person's goals, but I would, I would recommend six times in a three, three month period. If they have something very, very, especially, especially if it's trauma, and gut health related, and they really want to go deeper. Yeah. And so do you work with people? Do they have, I know you do some work remote, but then you do have ceremonial, you know, things and people have to fly out and all that. But what, what parts of this do you, can you do from anywhere, you know, in the country or what parts do you have to come and see you for certain sessions? Yeah, that's a great question. So like we have a group of women coming this weekend to do an in-person combo and plant medicine ceremony. And then it's an eight week program. So the rest of the time it's virtual. So if, if someone's mm. able to do that, I know it's a budget and a time and all of that, that's really ideal. But if, if they can't ever fly to me, or if they want to find other people that provide the same more or less as services as I do, if not, I have microdosing. So I coach people with little small doses. I know you can speak to that a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so I work with psilocybin and ayahuasca for microdosing and then do the, the remote or virtual coaching to help them with the mental, physical, spiritual, and emotional transformation. Yeah. Amazing. Well, one of the biggest things I think, and that you've been describing here is the way which it really, and I know people with addiction and kind of getting, it's like, it cracks you open emotionally, right? You guys start to experience or start to tap into more attunement with your emotional self, like, because I know you described being very distant or detached from your emotional being and, and really coming into that alignment and that awareness that you're like, that was my experience when we were doing the, I did your six week, I think it was the microdosing ayahuasca. And we were talking about healing the patriarchal wound and it was around father's day and people were having a lot of emotional release and purging in that process. And so I feel like, yeah, would you describe that as one of the biggest things that this medicine really brings is that kind of cracking, cracking open people who have maybe hard walls built around and impenetrable <laughs> feelings of like who, what 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 they're what they're doing here and how they're trying to kind of access some of that stuff and maybe have had challenges in that in the past absolutely 110 yeah yeah because it's 
And that's why I say it's not a DIY process. I mean, I know I've heard people say, yeah, I took a handful of mushrooms down by the ocean and it was amazing. <laughs> and the problem with that is you, you hear those stories maybe mm -hmm. most often, but I hear the horror stories of what happens when people try to DIY it because of your point, you're bringing stuff up that you've got to be ready for. My husband had massive, massive traumas, like horrific. I can't, I'm not going to say what they are because I, I, he's not here and I want to just honor his confidentiality, but he had three massive, traumatic, horrific things that were repressed came up. Mm. So you just got to be ready. Even microdosing can bring up, I, I've cried a lot on microdosing. I've had different like emotions come up that I couldn't handle in the moment. And that actually was my, how I began the journey. I, I actually started with microdosing because I thought that was going to help with my borderline alcoholism. And to be honest with you, it actually made things worse initially because I didn't have support. I didn't have a guide. I had a source who sold me the product and it was good product, but I didn't have any protocols. I didn't have any guidance. I didn't have any coaching. And so it scared me too much and made me a little destabilized, quite honestly. Mm -hmm. And so that's the key is this is even, even if you're doing shadow work just by itself without plant medicine, can be very, very hard because you're facing your fears. We've been taught to numb and suppress. We've been taught to just forget, just sweep it under the rug, right? And the divine feminine is here to say, I'm sorry, that doesn't work anymore. That patriarchal system of just looking the other way or just not to make light of the war, but just kill someone instead of making peace, right? Yeah. And so the medicine I feel is here to, to wake us up to that but you got to be ready for that. And that's, that's a brave and courageous path for sure. Definitely. Yeah. And I mean, we, we touched on this a little earlier about the, the real timeliness and kind of urgency of doing this work in a certain way. I mean, I feel like there are a lot of people um, right now who are becoming more and more, you know, spiritually awake and aware, but then what do you say to people who are totally resistant or they just are like, yeah, I'm fine. I don't actually need any of this. Or they just maybe are resistant to a lot of this stuff in the first place. Like how do we overcome even with our loved ones or our relationships or interpersonal connections who are just like, yeah, this isn't really necessary or important right now. <laughs> like it's not paying the bills. You know what I mean? <laughs> I know. I know. I understand. Yeah. It. And that's where, how do I say this? We've been brought up in a society where everyone has a shake lotion, potion, or pill or thing that you should try this. It's going to fix everything. But medicine is not like that. You have to fill the call. Like I've even had to change because I've been in sales for 23 years. I was all about P90X and all about this shake or this coffee or this thing. Like you should just try it. Everyone's doing it. Right. <laughs> and and I learned the, the, the medicine slapped me around and said, nope. That's not how this works. It's the same thing in religion. You're supposed to recruit everyone. I know you have somewhat of a of your own story with that, right? Mm -hmm. And your your childhood and and all of that. So, with medicine, they have to feel the call. They have to want to go down that path because it's a very sovereign path, and it's a very true choice path. It's not, I would never do it just because your buddy said you should, although <laughs> I guess my mentor did, but I was seeking and I was searching and I was broken and the medicine through him called me. So just make sure it feels like a, a true calling. If someone's like, eh, it's not for me. I actually say cool because it's, it's definitely something that they've, they've got to be ready for or not only ready for, but have the right support system in order to go through and walk through that path, because it, it can be, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. It's not about just getting high with your friends in a van down by the river. It, it's, it's very much a transformational life altering path for sure. And it's not for everyone and that's okay. Yeah. And as it should be, it should be sanctified in this way. If we're using these, you know, mind altering states and things like that, right. Or else we get real bad results. <laughs> yeah. That's why I'm, I'm, I gotta be honest with you. I, and I, I might ruffle a few feathers. I don't really want it to be legalized. Mm -hmm. Capitalism will take over. The plants will be bastardized and prostituted for profit and people will be using it more in a pharmaceutical model mindset. Mm -hmm. And wow. so for me, I'm 
I'm okay being underground and, and working with the plants in that capacity. Who knows? Maybe, maybe it'll be different, but I've, I've even seen some of the clinical components. I've worked with a psychotherapist with plant medicine. There was not much sacredness in it. It was very mm -hmm. clinical. It didn't really feel right to me, but again, I do come from, come at it from, I healed my religion wound. And now these plants have shown me that higher self and that divinity within if you're getting it prescribed by a psychotherapist, I, maybe they'll be talking about that, but I, you've got to use the medicine or sit with the medicine in a sacred way and, and connect with your divine source within to, to really, I think, get the most transformational results and reclaim your sovereignty. It's not just about, hey, because I've heard this by some of my past clients who are not clients anymore because they're like, hey, I just, I heard this could fix my brain or it could fix my ADHD. And I'm like going okay, that's not what the sacred plants are really here for. <laughs> In my estimation, it's not like swallowing a pill or a supplement. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a sacred journey and a rite yeah. of passage in a lot of ways. Right. Yeah. Like you mentioned, it's all, we have this instant gratification culture and program where everything needs to be in a pill or just, just you're medically prescribed and that's supposed to fix it. And that doesn't work with with anything. And I really like how you tied it back to the consciousness and the spiritual element and sovereignty. Like, actually, I was just reflecting this weekend with some friends about our, our path to sovereignty in this collective consciousness or the awakening process is really about coming into that into authenticity and, and sovereignty from systems and patriarchy and all of this stuff, religious backgrounds and cultures that have created all the walls and the separations between us. And that whole, that whole thing is much more than just a magic pill that you can take, right? Or like the matrix red pill. <laughs> or like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it is pretty funny. Because I think of the matrix, I've actually had that in one of my journeys where the Wachowskis were showing up and wanting to do a, a movie about plant medicine. It was so funny. But, <laughs> but it's true. You got to be just like the Neo was supposed to follow the girl with the rabbit. You oh, got, yeah. got to be willing to go down Alice in Wonderland and and like <laughs> open your mind and your heart, most importantly, to your truth, your sovereign truth and reclaiming your power. That would probably be the number one thing that I would think for me and anybody who's wanting to try plant medicine is, do, are you ready to reclaim your truth and your power? Because it's possible, but again, just don't, don't do it. Don't do it alone. Yeah. Yeah. You'll be going through this dismantling of your ego, egoic constructs and everything around you in certain points in time, like we talk about with, with all of the, sh the shadow work and this way that to, how to even get through, like you said, it's, it's, it's hard enough as it is when you're not on plant medicine or sacred medicines. And, and then it's, when you do that, it's all, I mean, for better or for worse, it's accelerated, but yeah, I, I it's an interesting problem that will happen if it is legalized. Like you mentioned, that's a really difficult issue that might be kind of having a lot of negative consequences versus our social impact when we when we start to see more and more of it right yeah for yeah. sure we, we've seen it happen in the jungles where the they call them the white man is coming down and buying up some of the jungle and now mm -hmm. monetizing retreats like candy at a parade and how it's actually hurting people and hurting the jungle and hurting the uh, the original indigenous cultural tribes of the land so it's, it's even impacting South America in a negative way. So it's, it's, it's a, it's an interesting time. And that's why we, like I said, we came out so quickly to serve and support because we want to keep it sacred and, and help people with the ascension process, especially you've got to come from your highest vibration and your best light and it's all heart centered stuff. So it's not just about fixing this and trauma. It's like, really, who am I and why am I here? And how can I be the best version of myself? Yeah, amazing. Wow. And I'm so glad to hear it from you because you are so, so much expertise in this area and bringing this work to your clients and like the safe, the safe way and the healthy way and the way that's in the most alignment. And even with the awareness of how it's has these detrimental effects potentially. And, and so that's just really important for people to have the right person to work with if they're going to explore these things. So that's so amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So where can people find you, uh, Magdalena? If, I know you have your social media and you have a couple of websites. Where do you, where do you want people to go if they're interested in reaching out or learning more? And maybe they do a consult call or talk to you a little bit about 
the possibilities or what might even be best for them, depending on their situation or individual scenario. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. If they want to follow me on YouTube, look for Misty Magdalena Grace, my podcast, which you yeah. know you've been on healthy and yeah. healthy and wise, being able that. to connect there. I can provide you my link tree that has some of my best information on there too, or just simply microdosing for health.com. And that's spelled out F O R microdosing for health. Um, but yeah, I'm on all the channels, LinkedIn, Instagram, all of that. And I do provide a consultation, no, no strings attached for free, just to see where people are at. And, and that's the thing is there's so many different possibilities. There's not a one size fits all because we're all unique. We're all different. So just to be, be mindful of that. Yeah, totally. I love that. And that you will consult with someone individually and find out what's best or if they can even fly out or do a, do a ceremonial situation because you have them like almost every month, it feels like. So <laughs> it's a great opportunity uh, to work in person if you go like for the more deeper dive, right? Yeah. And we, we do events in Phoenix and Minneapolis as well. Oh, yeah. Not, not nearly as much, of course, as our hometown, San Diego. And we have a retreat center now and the space for it. So just putting it out there for any of you Phoenicians or Minneapolis, Minnesota or surrounding states, we can, again, with the virtual thing, I can work with people in other countries as well. Amazing. Yes, I love that so much. And we're going to have the links. I'm also going to put this up on on my YouTube channel and on my website as well, guys. So check it out if you want to learn more, get in touch with Magdalena that way. And yeah, I'm just so excited that we got to reconnect. And I know it's just past the hour here, but any, you know, final thoughts or kind of words of wisdom you'd like to share with our audience before we wrap up here and things you might like to leave us with? <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like don't be afraid of the shadow. Make sure that you tap into that and, and, and greet it with love and compassion and really, really looking at yourself first. Everyone that comes into your life, partners, siblings, children, they're all mirrors and whatever the trigger is as within, so without, right? So the, the more you can work on that in a compassionate way, whatever tools you use, whether it's plant medicine or not, whether you work with me or not, just know that it's there for you. And it's it's really important this year when this ascension process to be mindful of that, not to take things personally, but to go within, go inward, to take radical responsibility for reclaiming your truth because everyone else is just here to help you walk your way back home. Oh my gosh, I love that. That's what we're all here for, to support each other in this process and encourage doing that work. <laughs> for anyone who might be resistant, I definitely suggest starting to dip your feet in and get the work done, right? We got a lot of work to do to clear out all these systems and deconstruct all of that uh, baggage that we're each carrying yes, yes. <laughs> on this life path. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. If we don't have any other questions, I'm going to send out this recording tomorrow for everyone on the email list. We do have about 150 people who registered for these calls. So if you're on that list, I'm excited to get you the replay because I know it's the middle of the day and we just like to keep building this momentum and do doing these calls live. I love the option to have this question and answers. I know we've had some comments come in on the Facebook and we've had uh, about five or six people watching there as well, Magdalena. So it was a great call. I'm so excited to have you and I hope we can do it again in the future as, as we progress all of this stuff and just keep building and building towards more of this momentum. Yeah, it's amazing. Thank you so much for all you do. You're amazing. Yeah, <laughs> thank you so much, guys. Thank you, Magdalena. All right, we'll talk soon, everyone. Bye-bye.